Greetings and welcome to a new video about analog electronics. We continue with another circuit. This is the summing amplifier. So far we have seen the voltage follower and the non-inverting and inverting amplifier. Now we will extend the circuits and move on to the summing amplifier. Of course we will look at the calculation also verify these in SPICE simulations. So what we have, we have this circuit, we have three inputs, VA, VB, VC, all of them are given, two volts, one volt and three volts. And we have three resistors here, R1, R2 and R3 also given the values. And we have the feedback resistors, one kilo ohms and the load resistance of 50 ohms. Now what we want in op op-amp is again considered as ideal in all cases and it is powered. So we have a the following qu uh, questions calculate the or express the VL load voltage as a function of the inputs VA, VB, and VC. So we have three inputs that will result in an output or load voltage. That's there is a, some mathematical expression, so we would like to know that in question A. Now, we also want to know what the actual value of that load voltage is given these values for the components. And in the C, we would like to know what the current is delivered by this op-amp, which is this, IOP. So let's look at our solutions. How do we start? Again, we start with the determining our circuit condition. So we have the V plus this node and V minus this node for the op-amp. These are really important nodes to start with. So we know V plus is now directly ground. And we can say, due to negative feedback around the op-amp, these two nodes must be equal to each other. That is always the case if you have negative feedback. If you don't have negative feedback, there is no guarantee that these are equal to each other. Now V plus is equal to V minus, but V plus is also zero. So we have also this node as a zero and it's called a virtual ground. It's not connected physically to ground, but it's virtually a ground potential. So in ideal op-amp, we have an infinite input impedance or infinite input resistance. That means the current entering the op-amp, this current I plus and also this current I minus are zero that will result in this expression. So we have now the conditions we require to move on and this circuit now can be also given in this formulation. So we can say the current I1, I2 and I3 will flow here, make up this IF which is the feedback current and this current is zero, that means all of these currents actually produces this IF. And this is a zero potential here, and there is a zero amps here. So all the discussion we have made here are summarized in here. Okay, and we have this plus and a minus because the current flow is chosen as from left to right for the feedback resistors. And this is the, uh, the current out of the op-amp, and this is the load current. So let's now express the VL as a function of the three inputs, VA, VB, and VC. So we can now say, let's now write down the equations. Again, since we have multiple inputs, we can use the superposition principle that is handy. So we can break up the problem, large problem, into smaller problems and then add the results. So we can say VL, the actual VL, is the VL due to VA only and the load voltage due to VB only and the load voltage due to VC only. So we can just consider one sort at a time. Now, if you look at this VA, for example, only and then the other sources are disabled, that means they are shorted since this is a voltage source and this is also a voltage source. So this is ground, so shorted to ground, so actually physically to ground. This is also ground. Now, since this potential is zero, and this potential is also zero. The voltage drop across this is also zero, so I can ignore it. This is also zero, the same uh, reasoning. So we can say the VA is actually seen R1 only, and then it goes to RF, and then we get a standard inverting amplifier configuration, and we don't have any problem with this R2 and R3, again, in ideal condition. Now that means, for VB is the same situation is happening. So then we can see only R2 and then R1 and R2 are now shorter since this is ground and this is ground and this node is always ground. And for VC the same uh, reasoning that we can say R2 and R1 is shorted by this two. These are ground and this is also virtually ground. So we can say we have only, only R3 here which sees the VC and then we have the RF again. So we have now sort in this configuration three inverting amplifiers 
in parallel and the parallel currents will be then added. So we have actually then VL is then this part, which is then minus RF over R1 times VA, minus RF over R2 times VB, and minus RF over R3 times VC. And you can extend this, you go to VD and VE, you can say another one, so minus RF times R4, for example, times VD. So there are many, input, uh, many uh, inputs possible here. So I've chosen for our discussion only three inputs. So then we have the following expression. We can now say, okay, we have all of them have a minus RF. So let's take it out and then rewrite this. Then we have the minus RF and then VA over R1, VA over R2, VC over VB, I mean over R2 and VC over R3. So we have this expression. We can see the minus RF is always there. And that means an inverting summing amplifier, it sums actually the voltages scaled. So the scaling is done by 1 over R2, R1, 1 over R2, and 1 over R3, times this uh, minus R2 to get the scaling completely correct. So we have also the minus sign again, it is an inverting action, inverting summing action. Okay, this is now the expression we uh, wanted to have for this question A. Now, moving on to question B, that is the actual load voltage. So we can now say, yes, lose, use this uh, expression and substitute the values for VA, VB, VC, and also the rest of the parameters for the resistors. Now we have 1K for 1 kilo ohm for the RF, so 10 to the power 3, 2 over 100, 1 over 200, and 300, 3 over 500. So if you do the math here, you will get exactly VL of minus 31 volts. So it is negative. It is of course negative because all of the input voltages are positive and it is an inverting summing amplifier, so the results must be also negative. So this, this is of course to check that this is indeed correct for yourself, the sign. Now for C, you can say the current delivered by the op-amp again, by this one, it is formed by again setting up the Kirchhoff's current law at node Y, this node, the output node. So we can say the IL is again made up of IF and IOP. So these two currents come at node Y and produces IL. This is this equation. Let's call it equation number one. We want of course more, so we also set up at equation number X, also another equation because the IF is also necessary. What is IF? So we see that the following here at this node X. IF is produced by I1, I2, and I3, but it is subtracted, so the part of it is subtract, subtracted by this I minus, but that I minus is zero. So we can just figure about it. So we can say I1, I2, and I3 will produce IF only. It will also produce in, let's say, in practical sense, also this current, but that is zero, so we can just figure about it. So we can say IF is this three, the summation of this I1, I2, and I3. Now we can say, let's call this equation number two, and also move on by saying, Substitute in our equation number 2 in equation number 1. What do we get? IL, the load current, is equal to the op-amp current, the current out of the op-amp, plus the I1, I2, and I3. Now express the IOP in terms of IL and the currents through the resistors R1, R2, and R3. We get this exp expression. Now, we have the load voltage, we have the resistors, so we can now use the voltages and the resistors using Ohm's law for each of these expressions. So IL is VL over RL, but I1 is, I1 is VA over R1. This is ground, so remember that is again virtual ground. So we can say this current flow is this voltage potential minus this voltage potential divided by the resistor R1, that's shown here. In the similar form for VB, minus zero over R2, that's shown here. And also for VC, minus zero over R3, that's shown here. So everything is now replaced in terms of the voltages and the resistors. Now we can now substitute this because we have everything. We have calculated the load voltage, we know the resistors and also the input voltages. So if you now do the math, you will get minus 651 milliamps. So that is now for the output current for op -amp. Now we have now everything, this is the collection summary. The expression for the VL in terms of the three input voltages, VA, VB, and VC. This is the load voltage, so load voltage expression, load voltage actual value, and also the output current of the op-amp. Let's also look at the simulation result. This is the simulation circuit I have uh, prepared, and you can see the current arrow here measuring the minus 651 milliamps. Again, 
is, this is verified, the calculation, and also the minus 31 volts at this node, also the load voltage is verified. We get more information from a table, so I also prepared a table by using exact same circuit and producing actually this table. You can see a lot of information is shown here, but let's pinpoint on some values here. This VP underscore one is here, this node voltage, so actually this node voltage. It is 1.1 or 1.11 times 10 to the power minus 16 volts, so it is very small. That means this is definitely zero, but this is very close to zero. So OPAMS tries to make that very close to zero, and you can see that also, and this is again our proof of virtual ground concept. Now you can see also this VL is minus 31. You can also see the output current, so IOP, this is the current arrow here, it is minus 651 milliamps, so again verified here. There are of course more information here, so you can see also the let's say the uh, current through each resistor and also the voltage across each resistor. Of course, we, this is not necessary for our uh, example in this case. Okay, now let's see what we have to do also in the simulator. So this is now all verified and it is perfect. So let's also jump now to the actual SPI simulator and produces this table also there. So let's now jump to the SPI simulator. All right, guys, we are now in the simulator. You can see the three input voltages, VA, 2 volts, VB, 1 volt, and VC, 3 volts. These are the resistors, R1, R2, and R3, given in this example. And we have the feedback resistors of 1 kilo ohm. This is the op-amp, ideal op-amp, and here's the current arrow. You can get it from the meter, current arrow, click on it. This is the current arrow to measure the current in the branch. And this is the voltage pin to measure the voltage at a specific point, so you can actually also get it from here, voltage pin. Click on it and you will get it. Now this is the load voltage, 50 ohms. So if I now do analysis, DC analysis, and then calculate node voltages, it will then produce the results for your meters. And you have now two meters here, you can see it will produce minus 651 milliamps as calculated and also the minus 31 volts. You can also produce uh, a table of results. So TC analysis again, table of DC results. Here we go. These are the results, a lot of information. Now you can see again, if I click with my pen, this is my pen and uh, some specific component, let's say the load, it will highlight it here in red, it's current and also it's voltage. So you can see in through this load, if I click on it, we have actually minus 620 milliamps flowing here. And uh, just minus one milliamp is flowing actually through the RF. So because the total was IOP. <coughs> I mean uh, th 31 milliamps, excuse me. So it is uh, 31 milliamps. You can also see what the voltage at this node is. So if I click on it, you can see it's highlighted. It was 1.11 times 10 to the power minus 16 volts. So very small. This is of course exactly zero, this node. So this node voltage is exactly zero, but this node is not perfectly zero, but it's very close to zero. And that is also the reason for using this virtual ground concept. Okay guys, this is for this example using a uh, inverting summing amplifier. We have, of course, also the other one, which is non-inverting am uh, summing amplifier. It sums two, three, four, five number of inputs and produces an inverted version of that summation at the output here at the load. If you have any questions, comments about this example, please let me know and I will try to answer them as soon as possible. Don't forget to like and share these videos so that we can reach more people for these interesting topics. See you next time in another video.